Mr. and Mrs. Pig's Evening Out by Mary Rayner. Once upon a time, there lived a family of pigs. There was Father Pig and Mother Pig. And then there were 10 piglets. They were called Sorrel Pig, Briony Pig, Hillary Pig, Sarah Pig, Cindy Pig, Toby Pig, Alan Pig, William Pig, Garth Pig, and Benjamin Pig. One evening, Mother Pig called the children to her as they were playing all over the house. Now, piglets, she said, your father and I are going out this evening. There was a chorus of groans. Uh, 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 uh. Not far, said Mrs. Pig, and I've asked a very nice lady to come and look after you. What's her name? asked William Pig. I don't like babysitters, said Benjamin. Oh, said Mrs. Pig, looking vague. Well, she's coming from the agency, so I'm not sure what her name is, but you're sure to like her. We didn't like the last one from the agency, grumbled Garth. I'm sure that you'll find this babysitter will be very nice. Now get along into your baths and I'll come and tuck you up before we go out. Splash, splash, why you are. The piglets took as long as they could having their baths and made a great many puddles and splashes in the bathroom. But at last, Mother Pig got them upstairs. Just as she was putting on her best dress, the front doorbell rang. Down ran Mrs. Pig, grunting and puffing in her haste to open the door. A dark face peered at her, heavily wrapped in a Macintosh and hat. Are oh, you Mrs. Pig? asked a gruff voice. Yes, said Mother Pig brightly. Do come in. The children are just getting into their beds. They sleep in bunk beds, she explained. And so they did. Two to a bed, head to tail, stacked five beds high. Can you help me? called Father Pig from the bedroom. Mrs. Pig hurried upstairs. He was just putting on his smart shirt, which he always wore when they went out. It was dark blue, and Mrs. Pig liked him to wear it because she thought it made him look thinner. Unfortunately, the buttons would keep coming undone, so that everyone always noticed how very tight the shirt had become. Mrs. Pig struggled to get it done up. Suddenly, she remembered that she had not asked the babysitter's name. She ran out of the bedroom again. The babysitter was just settling herself comfortably on the sofa. Would you mind telling me what you are called? said Mrs. Pig. The children do like to know. It's Mrs. Wolf, said the babysitter, crossing a pair of dark hairy legs and getting out her knitting. Oh, thanks said Mrs. Pig without thinking. Now, Mrs. Wolf, I've left the kitchen light on, and if you should feel like making yourself a hot drink or having something to eat later in the evening, do please help yourself. Thank you, I shall, said Mrs. Wolf. At that moment, Mr. Pig called through to say that he was quite ready, and with many farewell kisses and hugs for the children, Mr. and Mrs. Pig went out for the evening with light hearts. Mrs. Wolf sat in the living room and read magazines and knitted. The piglets all seemed to have gone off to sleep. She went upstairs once to check. It seemed a very long evening. There was nothing to watch on television. After a while, Mrs. Wolf began to feel empty, so she went into the kitchen. But she didn't turn on the kettle. No, she turned on the oven. Then she tiptoed up to the piglet's bedroom. In the lowest bunk bed were Garth and Benjamin, snoring faintly. Mrs. Wolf looked longingly at Garth, all rosy, plump, and pink. Then she snatched him up and carried him off downstairs. He made such a snorting and squealing. 
that all his brothers and sisters sat bolt upright in bed. Whatever was going on? Quick as a flash, Sorrel cried, After him, everyone, Mrs. Wolf is not to be trusted. Seizing Garth's blanket off his bed, the nine piglets galloped downstairs as fast as their short legs would carry them. Thump, 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 thump. They were there in the nick of time. Mrs. Wolf was bending over the oven with her back to them, holding Garth, about to put him in. Fool, if you take this side of the blanket, fool that, hissed Sorrel outside the kitchen. The piglets did as they were told. Now, ordered Sorrel. They ran in and threw the blanket over Mrs. Wolf's head. She backed away from the oven, still holding Garth. Muffled snarls came through the rug. The piglets held on tight. Mrs. Wolf struggled and threshed, but she could not get out. She dropped Garth and went down on all fours. Garth wriggled free. The piglets hung on. Mrs. Wolf braced herself and humped her back, her long hairy tail lashing from side to side. Terrible growls came from her. Hang on, everyone, shouted Sorrel. Mrs. Wolf leapt into the air. The piglets were tossed to and fro, but still they hung on bravely. As soon as they were back on their feet, they circled round her so that the rug was wrapped tighter and tighter. Then they tied the four corners together so that she could not possibly get out and left her in the middle of the kitchen. When their father and mother came home, the ten piglets told them what a narrow escape they had had. Father Pig went out into the night and carried the blanket bottle to the middle of the bridge. There he leant over the parapet and shook Mrs. Wolf into the swirling depths of the big river. Kosploosh! And she was not heard of again for a very long time. The end.